No, I'm not going to say it. I could be tempted to say it. And it could be said of this year. But, well... 2022 was a great year for music. 2022 was a great year for music. 2022 was a great year for music. It was a great year for music. What a great year for, um... For music. A great year for music. A great year for music. A great year for both rock and metal music. A pretty good year for hip hop. A amazing year for music. Much stronger year for music. So yeah, see, I'm an experienced YouTuber, so I couldn't possibly fall back on that tired cliche of a phrase. It was a huge year for year for music. Okay, that was my very first video. I was a newbie back then, okay? So... Cut me some slack. Greetings one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, sorry about all that confetti, by the way. I'll, I'll just get that stuff cleaned up later. But uh, anyway, uh, yes, it's time. Well, actually, it's a couple weeks past time. Uh, but, well, what can you do? Uh, better late than never, right? But yes, finally, at last, here I am to deliver that uh, one last Christmas present, I guess, if you will. That most magical of weeks, Tom's Hit Parade's 2022 year-end spectacular-ish. Yes, it is uh, my breakdown, a uh, week-long breakdown of all of the good and some of the bad from my own personal year in music of 2022, culminating in my countdown of my top 25 favorite studio albums of 2022. But yes, one video every single day this week. Uh, lots of stuff to give you before then. Uh, oh, and by the way, just so you know, that cold open was just a playful little poke. Uh, just because someone might fall back on that phrase doesn't mean they're a lazy or bad YouTuber, or that their year-end list isn't worth watching. Uh, in fact, that's why I showed each YouTuber's handle at the bottom of the screen there, so you can check them out for yourselves. Some good year-end lists hiding in that little bunch. Uh, besides, it's not like they were wrong, right? This was one hell of a year for music. Oh, and also another, by the way, uh, if I say the phrase this year, uh, even though I recorded and put up these videos in 2023, when I say this year, I meant 2022. Just a little disclaimer there. Uh, and by the way, speaking of which, I'm sorry I didn't get this week's videos to you earlier. I had fully intended to record these videos on Christmas weekend and have them up on New Year's week. I had a four-day weekend set aside specifically for that purpose. But then Mother Nature left a special gift under my tree. A cold. Yes, I caught the worst cold I'd had in years, in fact. Uh, I was so sick and tired that I missed three days of work. Thank goodness for paid sick leave. Uh, so what was originally going to be a productive four-day weekend turned into seven days of laying around and watching other YouTubers' year-end lists. Uh, but in the end, that was a good thing. Uh, it reminded me of albums I'd forgotten about, and in a few cases brought my attention to albums I had totally missed. Add to that a last-minute round of re-listens to minimize recency bias, and I can safely say that, as nasty as that cold was, it made my Albums of the Year list more well-rounded and finely tuned than it might have been otherwise. But as I said, you'll have to wait until the end of this week to see that list. You'll get a few other lists before then, including one that you won't see on anyone else's channel, because no one else does Bargain Bag. Uh, but I thought I'd start the festivities today with a little, little recap in three sections. Uh, personal thoughts, music headlines of 2022, and a remembrance of stars we lost. There honestly wasn't a whole lot worth talking about in my personal year in music, uh, other than my most memorable purchases of the year, which I'll get to later this week. Uh, I'm not much of a concert goer. I didn't attend any concerts in 2022, in fact, so I hope I can still be called a music fan in your eyes. Uh, a major highlight, though it wasn't directly music-centric, happened back in March, when I flew back out to Oklahoma to be a groomsperson in the wedding of my little brother Noah and my little sister-in-law Alyssa, also known as one of the absolute best weekends of my life, seriously. Uh, I had time to visit a few record stores while I was there, a couple of them with Noah, who graciously took one of his last days of bachelorhood to hang out with me. And the stuff I brought home will forever have memories attached to that amazing weekend. I really dove into thrift stores for the first time this year. Uh, after one quick stop in summer of 2021, and then no other visits really until after the holidays, I went on three St. Vinny's crawls in 2022. I came home with a lot of good stuff for not a lot of money, uh, but even that has its drawbacks. Uh, but hopefully it will curb my tendency to impulse buy going forward, 
at least until I'm through the current listening backlog, and maybe it'll cure my compulsive need to recase used CDs, uh, which would eliminate the expense of buying new replacement cases. Uh, yes, I've been uh, trying to conserve cases for the last few months uh, until I have the money to buy another bulk uh, bunch of new CD cases. As for my general buying habits, uh, CDs still dominated my new album purchases by at least a two-to-one margin over LPs, a little less CD-heavy than the last couple of years, but not as even-keeled as the previous few years. But when it comes to classic albums, uh, LPs still make up over half of my purchases. What was on all those albums I bought? Uh, well, as will become evident in my Albums of the Year list, my listening hours for country music and female artists have continued to trend upward for the fifth or sixth year in a row, and I'm continuously trying to push my comfort zone into other genres. My mostly dormant appreciation for film scores experienced a modest resurgence. I think I may have picked up more soundtrack CDs this year than the past two or three years put together. The only genre that I, I've given less attention to this year has been jazz, and I'm not sure why. Speaking of my listening backlog, uh, by the way, my LPs outnumber my CDs two to one in terms of unlistened to albums. That's the top row there, uh, just in case you're wondering. Uh, I'm starting to worry about getting overwhelmed or burnt out, so I have a New Year's resolution uh, to avoid buying any LPs or CDs for one month. I may end up failing spectacularly, uh, but I'm actually going to give it an honest effort. Uh, I chose February. Uh, first of all, it's the shortest month, so you've got to start somewhere, right? Uh, plus, I've already screwed January up by buying something. Uh, another reason I chose February is because I'll be taking a trip to Portland this month, uh, my first overnight trip since before the pandemic, and my first trip to Portland at all in over a year. Uh, that's why you didn't hear me mention Portland at all in 2022 videos, by the way. Uh, and I have a tidy stash of mad money set aside for that, which I have a feeling I'll need. So January is my grace period for uh, this New Year's resolution. And don't worry, of course, you will be getting a nice vlog-style video of my Portland trip coming up uh, probably in early February. Now, for the second section of this video, I thought it would be interesting to do a little recap of the more noteworthy music-related headlines that shaped the year of 2022. First of all, in January, a report reveals that in 2021, CD sales increased from the previous year for the first time in 17 years. Obviously, for a CD devotee like me, that's great news to hear, as long as a price increase doesn't go along with that. Uh, in March, Arcade Fire's bad year begins. Will Butler announces his departure from the band, and five months later, his brother Wynn would be hit with sexual misconduct allegations. In April, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees are announced, including 80s favorites Duran Duran, Lionel Richie, and Eurythmics. What a year for an 80s guy like me, right? Uh, Dolly Parton famously declines the honor, but later accepts. In May, Apple discontinues the iPod just one year after its 20th anniversary. And it's just as well that I realized the year before how obsolete it had become and gladly ditched my iTunes app as well. In July, the musical impact of Stranger Things makes headlines with Kate Bush's Running Up That Hill and Metallica's Master of Puppets becoming hits on the charts again. And I can hon honestly say that I still haven't watched a single episode of Stranger Things. Maybe that should be another uh, year New Year's resolution. Hmm? In August, the bomb drops that Mobile Fidelity Sound Labs has been using digital masters to make their analog reissues for over a decade, uh, leaving me giggling to myself at all the outraged audiophiles who swore they could tell the difference between analog and digital. <laughs> anyway, in October, Kanye West continues the implosion of his career by making a bunch of highly dis disturbing and offensive comments of anti-Semitic and other natures. Seriously, I have to wonder at this point, is he deliberately imploding his career and his livelihood? Y it makes you wonder, doesn't it? But anyway, moving on. Uh, in November, Ticketmaster's near monopoly draws massive criticism and scrutiny thanks to a perfect storm of service fees, scalpers, and the Taylor Swift tour presale crash. Thank goodness I'm not a concert goer. That's just one reason I'm glad I don't do a lot of concerts. A and wrapping things up in December... Nick Cannon's 12th child is born, the 5th in 2022 alone and the 10th in five years for him, prompting nearly all of us to ask, can't the guy keep it in his pants? Seriously? Yes, I know Nick Cannon isn't a music star in the strictest sense, but he did put out a hip-hop album once and is host of The Masked Singer, so that's close enough, right? 
And in the final segment of this video, I thought it would be nice to give a little in memoriam of sorts, recognizing all of the uh, music luminaries who passed away during the year of 2022. Starting with the oldest and probably the one we've heard the most without any of us knowing his name. Bill Pittman, who passed away in August at the age of 102, was a guitarist with the session band The Wrecking Crew, which was heard on many Phil Spector productions, singles by The Mamas and the Papas, Jan and Dean, Sonny and Cher, and many, many others. Uh, a guitarist with another major session band, Joe Messina of the Motown backing band The Funk Brothers, also passed away this year. Uh, other guitarists who left us in 2022 include Barry Bailey of the Atlanta Rhythm Section, Ricky Gardner, who worked with David Bowie and Iggy Pop, and Jeff Cook of the country band Alabama. Two of the youngest deaths this year were The Wanted member Tom Parker at 33 and pop singer Aaron Carter at 34. We also lost Foo Fighters drummer Taylor Hawkins, rapper Coolio, lead vocalist of The Screaming Trees Mark Lanigan, and pop singer Darius Campbell Dinesh, who won the third, uh, third place in the first season of the British Pop Idol series, uh, all before the age of 60. We lost all those guys before the age of 60. Far too young to go. Uh, aside from Taylor Hawkins, other great drummers we lost this year include Sandy Nelson, a prolific session drummer who also had several top 40 singles in the 50s under his own name, uh, Willie Leacox of the soft rock band Alabama, Sam Lay, who drummed for Bob Dylan, Muddy Waters, and Paul, the Paul Butterfield Blues Band, Alan White of Prog Rockers Yes, Dino Donnelly of The Rascals, and Jerry Allison, who drummed with Buddy Holly and the Crickets. While we're on the subject of The Bottom End, we lost a few talented bassists this year. Michael Henderson, who played for Stevie Wonder, Aretha Franklin, and Miles Davis. Uh, Alec John Such of Bon Jovi. And Daryl Hunt of The Pogues. The rock band Nazareth lost two members in 2022, guitarist Manny Charlton in July and singer Dan McCafferty in November. We also said goodbye to electronic musician Vangelis, who was notif notable for his scores to the films Chariots of Fire and Blade Runner. Golden Age stage and screen lyricist Marilyn Bergman, film and TV composer Angelo Badalamenti, and Monty Norman, who gained immortality for composing the James Bond theme. Many great voices were silenced this year. Among the women, we lost funk soul belter Betty Davis, pop diva Irene Cara, and R&B vocalist Ronnie Spector. Some of the male vocalists who passed away this year were Calvin Simon of Parliament and Funkadelic, Gary Brooker of Procol Harum, and William Hart of the Delphonics. Speaking of the Delphonics, songwriter and producer Tom Bell passed away this year. He worked with Philadelphia soul groups the Delphonics, the Stylistics, and others. As did another noteworthy producer and songwriter, Lamont Dozier, of the Motown production team Holland Dozier Holland. As well as songwriter John Lind, who wrote Madonna's Crazy For You, Earth, Wind & Fire's Boogie Wonderland, and several other hits. Country music lost its fair share of artists, Legendary vocalist Naomi Judd, half of the mother-daughter duo The Judds, C.W. McCall, famous for his novelty hit Convoy and a personal favorite of mine, Black Bear Road, singer Mickey Gilley, and David Muse of country rock bands Firefall and the Marshall Tucker Band. The passing of jazz saxophonist Pharaoh Sanders came just a year and a half after the release of his critically acclaimed final album Promises, a collaboration with Floating Points and the London Symphony Orchestra. We also lost Earth, Wind & Fire saxophonist Andrew Woolfolk, jazz pianist Ramsey Lewis, and keyboardist Ian MacDonald of King Crimson and Foreigner. Many notable bands lost founding members this year. Keith Levine of The Clash and Public Image Limited, Don Wilson of surf rock legends The Ventures, Anita Pointer of The Pointer Sisters, Randy Rand of glam metal band Autograph, Andy Fletcher of new wave group Depeche Mode, Jeremiah Green of Modest Mouse, and keyboardist and trombonist Dick Halligan of Blood, Sweat, and Tears. And let's not forget all of the other major talents taken from us over the past year. Jim Seals, half of the 70s soft rock duo Seals and Crofts, teen idol Bobby Rydell, country legend Loretta Lynn, 70s pop icon Olivia Newton-John, bigger-than-life rock singer Meatloaf, Fleetwood Mac vocalist Christine McVie, and last but not least, rock and roll pioneer Jerry Lee Lewis. So Godspeed and rest in peace to each and every one of those artists and the many others who I didn't have room for on this list, who we lost in 2022. Well, that wraps things up for my intro to Tom's 2022 year in Spectacular-ish. Uh, stay tuned all week long. I got lots of lists coming your way and a bunch of other stuff every day this week. 
But that'll do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notification bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.